If there's one thing about the original Sonic the Hedgehog that cannot be understated, it's the game's legacy. Not only did it lead to one of the most popular video game based franchises of all time, but the game itself is fondly remembered by millions of fans everywhere. Because of this, the game has become quite iconic, and Sega knows this very well. Sonic 1 has become one of the most ported video games of all time. With the game appearing on so many systems and devices, it can be pretty hard to keep track of it all. With the release of the Sega Genesis Mini, another way to play Sonic 1 has been introduced. And that got me thinking, how many ports and releases of Sonic 1 are there? How many unique copies of Sonic the Hedgehog could you own? That's what I'll be answering today. In this video, I'll be going through every released version of Sonic the Hedgehog, and maybe even some unreleased ones too. Also, I'll be focusing on the 16-bit Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive release of Sonic 1, not the 8-bit game. There's a lot to cover in this video, so with all of that said, let's begin. We'll of course start with the original Sega Genesis release, which famously was released on June 23rd, 1991. However, what you may not know is that this was only in America and Europe. The Japanese release of Sonic 1 didn't hit store shelves until a little over a month later, on July 26th, 1991. Because of this, the Japanese version has a few extra bonuses not seen in the American release. These include general bug fixes such as the infamous Spike Bug, as well as additional graphical effects such as more animations in the background of Green Hill, and a ripple effect on the water in Labyrinth Zone. Moving on, would you believe believe that Sonic 1 actually saw a few re-releases on the Genesis itself? I suppose given how many versions of this game exist, it's not too surprising, but it really goes to show how much Sega pushed this game. Sonic Classics, known in Europe as Sonic Compilation, was released in 1995 and collects Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine onto one cartridge. This was released at the end of the Genesis lifespan, so it was likely meant to be a budget compilation of three great games. It was released in 1995 in Europe and 1997 in America, making it the last Sonic game to be released for the Genesis. Genesis. This release is special as it was the first ever Sonic game compilation, which has continued to be a popular trend with the series even today. The game saw another release with this box, being released under the Sega Classics brand. There's also of course the Not For Resale copy, which was included in various system bundles. When a game is included in a bundle like this, it's usually labeled as such. In 1995, another compilation cartridge was released for the Sega Mega Drive in Europe. Volume 3 of the Mega 6 series included Sonic 1. In 1996, a similar compilation was released in America called Six pack, which also included Sonic 1. So yeah, on the Genesis alone, Sonic 1 was re-released a total of 5 times. This isn't super strange given stuff like the player's choice branding on Nintendo games, but they really pushed this game on its original console. Moving on from the Sega Genesis, the first true port of Sonic 1 was released in 1993 for arcades. Sega's Mega Play arcade board was designed to allow for easy ports of Genesis games to arcades, and Sonic 1 was one of the games that was converted. This version is practically the same as the Genesis release, only with a credit system in place of continues, and and also both Labyrinth and Scrap Brain Zone have their third acts removed. Okay, enough generic repackagings of the same game on its original system. It's time to move on to the big boy stuff. And nothing is more big boy than Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn. Released in 1997 to quench the Sonic thirst Saturn owners had at the time, Sonic Jam collects the four core Genesis Sonic games onto one disc, and adds countless extras. The games included in Sonic Jam are not emulated, but are instead true recreations of the Genesis games, built from the ground up for Saturn hardware. Because of this, Sonic Team was able to mess around with the games that include bonus features not found in their original release. The most well known of these being the spin dash being added to Sonic 1, but they also included stuff like time attack mode and even difficulty selection, providing an easy mode for the games to make them more accessible. However, Sonic Jam is mostly recognized not for its faithful ports, but instead for the other extra content included in it. Sonic World, a repurposed Saturn prototype of Sonic Adventure's engine, was a loving tribute to the series and a glimpse at what was to come for Sonic in 3D. It was the hub world that connected everything in the collection together. In this hub world, you could find galleries for classic music, artwork, and even commercials. Sonic Jam was actually the first official time the West learned about the Sonic OVA. Being released only six years after Sonic 1, it's hard to believe that this is still one of the best releases of the game. A less exciting but still noteworthy release of the game came in 2001 for the Sega Dreamcast. Sega Smash Pack Volume 1 was released on the system towards the end of its life, giving diehard Sega fans a new way to experience some classic games. Unfortunately, the emulation in this pack isn't the best, but it was still a quality effort. One thing that's always stuck out to me about this compilation though isn't anything in the game itself, but instead the second page of the game's manual. On it, there's a brief introduction to the collection, and it's a pretty heavy read. You can definitely tell this was written at the time when Sega was going through a lot of changes. 
Dance. While this compilation is titled Sega Smash Pack Volume 1, the Dreamcast went out of production shortly after its release, and there was never a Volume 2. Despite how much passion was put into this compilation's release, nothing could save the Dreamcast and Sega went third party. As sad as that was, it meant that the floodgates for Sonic ports and re-releases had been opened. After Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Advance established Sonic's place on Nintendo consoles, Sega released Sonic Mega Collection for the Nintendo GameCube in late 2002. The game contains every Sega Genesis Sonic game, and even some extra games too. Along with that, the collection houses tons of content in its museum. This compilation was less of a celebration and more of a necessity. With Sonic games releasing on Nintendo platforms, now was the perfect time to introduce Nintendo fans to Sonic's history, and this game did that wonderfully. A few years later, Sonic Mega Collection itself was re-released on the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, and PC, now known as Sonic Mega Collection Plus. This game included everything from the original release, with the addition of the Game Gear Sonic games. The Xbox release was re-released yet again, this time being bundled with Super Monkey Ball Deluxe. This was a thing Sega used to do all the time. Moving on, Sonic Gems Collection was a spiritual sequel to Mega Collection, released for the GameCube and PS2 in 2005. While Sonic 1 wasn't included in full, the final zone was playable in the museum. While it has a time limit, if you beat the final boss before it runs out, it is possible to play more of the game. Around the same time, the very generically titled Sega Genesis Collection was released. This came out for the PS2 and PSP. Alright, now we get to talk about everyone's favorite thing in the world, mobile ports. In 2005, the Sonic Cafe mobile game subscription service added Sonic 1 to its lineup. For a mid-2000s port of a Genesis game to Java phones, it's not too bad. This version of the game was later ported again under the Sega Mobile brand as Sonic the Hedgehog Mobile. This release has several differences compared to the Genesis original, such as the removal of special stages. In this version, if the player jumps into the giant ring at the end of the stage, they're automatically given a Chaos Emerald. This release of the game was also split into two parts you had to download separately. Part 1 contained the first three zones of the game, while Part 2 has the later half. This game fittingly came with certain Panasonic cell phones in Europe and Japan. This port was also available to be downloaded on Verizon and AT&T phones, though that release lacks sound effects. Sonic made his iPod debut in late 2007 with a port of Sonic 1 for the iPod. This release of the game could be played on the 5th generation iPod, the iPod Classic, and iPod Nanos from the 3rd to 5th generations. This version was very faithful to the original, while also adding new features such as the ability to save your game, a tutorial, as well as now having loading screens. While a faithful port, this version of the game was controlled using the iPod's click wheel, so I can't imagine it was that comfortable to play. The game was then ported to iOS devices such as the iPhone in 2009. This version of the game was an emulated port of the Genesis game, with touchscreen controls. It wasn't that great. It had poor audio quality and slowdown, but thankfully it was later replaced with... After proving themselves with the incredible 2011 port of Sonic CD, Sonic 1 was completely remastered using Christian Whitehead's retro engine. Both Taxman and Headcanon worked very hard to produce what many see as the definitive release of Sonic 1, and it was released on iOS and Android devices in 2013. This release replaced the 2009 release of Sonic 1 in the App Store, and anyone who owned that version received a free upgrade to the new release. What did this new release entail? Well, the game has been completely rebuilt from the ground up, running on the incredible retro engine seen in fan games such as Retro Sonic. The game now has widescreen support, which is a huge deal for these classic Sonic games. It also runs at a smooth 60 FPS, among other handling improvements. Along with just being a better version of the game, loads of extras have been added as well. The spin dash is once again featured, just like in Sonic Jam, but for the first time ever, Tails and Knuckles became officially playable in Sonic 1. To accommodate them, the level designs have been slightly tweaked in certain levels to give them hidden pathways, just like in Sonic 3. There's a hidden 7th special stage, Super Sonic, easy to use level select and debug modes, this is without a doubt the definitive version of Sonic 1. However, unlike Sonic CD's 2011 remaster, the retro engine remakes of Sonic 1 and 2 have remained exclusive to iOS and Android, with no console or even PC release available. The reason for this is completely unknown, especially given how much Sega loves to re-release these games anyway, but as of right now, you can only play these on your phone. Unless you want to break out your Ouya or something. Before the 2013 release, a few more ports of Sonic 1 came out during this time. Let's quickly go through them. On November 19, 2006, along with the launch of the Wii itself, the Virtual Console service was introduced. One of the titles the service launched with was the original Sonic the Hedgehog. A port of the game by the company Backbone Entertainment was released on the Xbox 360 in November of 2007. The game was also included in Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, a compilation released in February of 2009 which included Sonic 1, along with dozens of other Genesis classics. Sonic Classic Collection was a compilation of various Genesis 
Sonic games for the Nintendo DS, released in March of 2010. While this game only included the four core Genesis Sonic titles, it was originally planned to feature many more games, to make it more in line with collections such as Sonic Mega Collection. Sonic PC Collection was a compilation of various PC Sonic games released in European territories in October of 2009. Along with Sonic Heroes, Sonic Riders, and Sonic Adventure DX, the entirety of Sonic Mega Collection Plus is included too. This means this is the largest single-release Sonic compilation to date, featuring 29 playable games. This compilation was re-released in 2011 as Sonic Anniversary PC Pack to celebrate the series' 20th anniversary. Along with the games, it now included a special 20th anniversary mouse and mouse pad as well. Another PC compilation that included Sonic 1 was Sega Mega Drive Classic Collection Volume 1, which was released in Europe. There were four different volumes of the series, and they were eventually all bundled together as Sega Mega Drive Classic Collection Gold Edition, which of course included Sonic 1. The game was released on the PlayStation Network on March 29, 2011, and if all of these weren't enough ways to play Sonic 1 on your PS3, in the console version of Sonic Generations, you can unlock Sonic 1 in full as a playable minigame. However, this is not available in the PC or 3DS versions of the game. Sonic 1 has been released on Steam along with the other Genesis Sonic games. Though remember, this is simply an emulated port and not the 2013 Taxman release. A remake of Sonic 1 was released for the 3DS in 2013. This was one of the many 3D conversions of classic Sega games released for the 3DS. This wasn't an emulated port of the game, rather the code was rewritten so that the game could support the 3D display offered by the 3DS. This release was first an eShop downloadable title, but was later collected in Sega 3D Classics Collection, which had a physical release and was released in America in 2016. A similar revamped version of Sonic 1 was released on the Nintendo Switch in 2018, under the Sega Ages brand. This release not only added the spin dash, but also the drop dash from Sonic Mania, along with new game modes. Along with that, a Nintendo Switch compilation titled Sega Genesis Classics was also released in 2018 and included Sonic 1. That's it for emulated re-releases and remakes, but believe me, we're far from done. We haven't even started talking about the... plug and plays. Have any of you ever heard of a little company known as At Games? They were founded in 2001 and focused on releasing budget-priced plug-and-play game consoles, systems that simply plug into your TV and have games built in ready to be played. They're best known for their Atari line of products, but have teamed up with Sega numerous times. If you've ever walked into a store like Walgreens and seen an out-of-place Sega Genesis branded machine, it was an At Games product. These are notorious for the fact that, well, you get what you paid for. These are cheap consoles made to sell off of nostalgia alone. Someone who finally remembers the Genesis would walk past one of these and think, hmm, I remember liking Vector Man 2, I'm gonna buy this. Most, if not all of these are plagued with poor sound emulation, incorrectly sized displays, among other issues. They also usually include a ton of really cheap bonus games that wouldn't be out of place on something like the Nintendo V. Yeah, not a good look. But despite all of that, they sell pretty well, and have been produced for years. There are so many of these things that have been produced, it's hard to keep track of them all, but a ton of them do have Sonic 1 built into them, so let's have a bit of a lightning round and go through a bunch of them. First up, we have the Super Sonic Gold system, which includes Sonic 1 and 2, as well as Sonic Spinball and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. There's also the Arcade Legends Sega Mega Drive, which includes Sonic 1, a non-arcade game. Uh, there are these great ones that come in the shape of Sonic's head, though these ones don't actually include Sonic 1. Then of course there are the various Sega Genesis flashback machines they've released. All of these use the same chips, they just come in different boxes released during different years, with some slight variation to the games included. Honestly, I could make a separate video on just these at-game consoles because they're just so interesting and so, so bad. Seriously, while the games play fine, the sound issue is a real buzzkill. I mean, if you just want your quick and easy fix of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, you could do worse, but this really isn't your best option. What is your best option? Well, for a plug-and-play emulator, you obviously can't beat the recent recently released Sega Genesis Mini, which was released in September of 2019 and features near-perfect emulation of 40 classic Genesis games. This one was done by Sega in-house, not just licensed by them and then actually produced by Act Games. This is the real deal, and from experience I can tell you, it doesn't get better than this. This system even includes games like Mega Man The Wily Wars, which is just the icing on the cake. I totally recommend this system, especially over whatever else Act Games has made. And yes, Sonic 1 is included. Woohoo! So at this point, we've basically talked about every single officially released version or port of Sonic 1. However, there is still more to talk about. For example, what about cancelled re-releases or ports? Did you know that an official PC port of Sonic 1 was planned in the early 90s? Following the release of Sonic 1, the company US Gold obtained the rights to port the game to various PCs at the time, such as the Amiga and Atari ST, as well as 8-bit machines such as the Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum. However, after the immense success Sonic was seeing on the Genesis alone, Sega pulled out of the deal, and no official 
port of Sonic 1 ever materialized on these platforms. These two supposed screenshots, which were shown off in the September 1991 issue of the Italian magazine The Game Machine, show off what the port could have looked like, demonstrating simpler, redrawn graphics and different level design. It's unknown how much work was actually done on these ports, or even if these screenshots are from an actual playable build or simply mock-ups. Sonic 1 was also planned to be converted to the Sega CD, as was shown at Summer CES 1992. Again, it's unknown how much work was actually done for this conversion, or if this release was going to feature any extra content, but regardless, it along with the CD conversion of Sonic 2 were scrapped as Sonic CD was put in development. It would have been very interesting to see what an upgraded release of Sonic 1 could have featured. I imagine some ideas from the original release that were cut might have been added back, but this is purely speculation. Hmm, what else is there? Uh, does this count? What you're looking at is a game called Somari the Adventurer. It was made by the company Hummer Team and was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1994. It is, obviously, an unlicensed pirate game, but man is it a fascinating one. Somari is essentially a Famicom port of Sonic the Hedgehog, so yes, it does count for this video. And apart from some really shoddy glitches that sometimes make it almost unplayable, it's a pretty okay one at that. It's not very fun, but pretty impressive for the time. This game has become very well known for how absurd it is, and is often featured on Famiclone bootleg content consoles or multi-carts. It's essentially Sonic 1 on the NES. How cool is that? Here's a look at the original game's box art, featuring art of the man himself, Somari, as well as mimicking the Japanese box art style of Sonic 1. As most bootlegs go, this game has been repackaged and retooled into many games over the years. There's of course Sonic the Hedgehog, a hack of Somari which replaces him with Sonic himself, making it pretty much just straight up Sonic 1 on the NES. There's also Sonic and Knuckles 5, Sonic 3D Blast 5, and Sonic 3D Blast 6, which are all pretty much the same as Sonic the Hedgehog, only featuring featuring different title screens. There's also one called Family Kid, which stars a unique mascot, as well as one called Doraemon, which stars Doraemon for some reason and features unique art and levels. There's also one called The Hummer, which stars the team who made Samari, Hummer Team's mascot. Two different versions of The Hummer exist, one of which has many differences compared to the original Samari. There's also the various boxes and carts that Samari has been released under over the years. Here's one where Samari and Vector team up for some reason. Bootleg games, especially NES games, are a true rabbit hole and there's much more than meets the eye. This game was very popular in both Russia and China, and has become one of the most popular unlicensed games of all time. One day, I would love to own the original Sky Blue cart you see here. This is believed to be the original release of the game. Apart from Samari, various bootlegs of the original Sonic 1 have been released as well, but none are all that interesting, at least compared to this guy. And there you have it! A look at how many times Sega has repackaged and sold you the same game. Sonic 1 has to be one of the most re-released games of all time. But of course it is! Few games have a legacy like Sonic 1. And you have to admit, seeing so many different conversions and interpretations of the same game can be pretty fascinating. I hope this video has given you some insight on how many times a game can be repackaged and resold. It's pretty crazy. Wait, what do you mean I'm forgetting something? Oh, I forgot about Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that one. Perhaps I'll revisit this idea with other games eventually, as Sonic 1 is far from the only game that has gotten this treatment. With over 30 ports, there are plenty of ways to play the original Sonic the Hedgehog, but I'm sure Sega will continue to re-release the game in hopefully new and exciting ways for years to come.